Hello back again on the Top Recap channel. This time I will tell a movies entitled Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Let's get straight into the storyline. The story begins by showing the time of the Second World War in 1944. At that time, Nazi soldiers led by Colonel Weber captured Indiana Jones, who wanted to take a stolen artifact, the Longina Spear, a spear that pierced Jesus Christ during the crucifixion. Colonel Weber also hired an astrophysicist named Jürgen Waller to test the authenticity of the spear. However, when they checked it, there was a sudden explosion around them. Colonel Weber then ordered his men to take the spear into the train because they would give it to Hitler, while Jones will be hung on the tower to death. But before hanging a bomb suddenly fell from the roof, and as soon as it hit the ground floor, it exploded, killing the Nazi soldiers. Fortunately, Jones survived and managed to escape death. As Colonel Weber was about to board the train, he met his men, who managed to capture Jones's friend in the forest, Professor Basil Shaw. Because he was curious about Jones, Colonel Weber brought Basil into his train. Meanwhile, Jones stole a car, but unfortunately, he became the driver of two soldiers who were asked to return to headquarters. On the way to the base, Jones dares to attack the Nazi convoy to chase Colonel Weber's train. With his driving skills, Jones managed to make his way onto a Nazi motorcycle and used the motorcycle to get to the train. Once on the train, Jones begins to eliminate the Nazi soldiers on guard. Meanwhile, Weber interrogates Basil about Indiana Jones's identity. Basil also said that Indiana was just an ordinary archaeologist. Still, Weber did not believe him and tried to execute Basil. But before that happened, Jürgen Waller came to tell Weber that the Longinus spear he was carrying was fake. Waller convinced Weber to replace the spear with a more valuable and powerful artifact for Hitler, the Antikythera Dial of Destiny. This dial was invented by the mathematician Archimedes, who believed it could make him a god because this artifact could take us back in time and we could change history. At that moment, one of the soldiers reported an intruder on the train. Knowing this, Weber ordered all his soldiers to hunt down Jones. Meanwhile, the soldiers chased Jones, who managed to infiltrate. Finally, he arrived at Basil's room, which was empty. There, Jones found his hat and whip. He also found Basil, who was tied up. When the two were about to escape, they met Voller, who was immediately hit by Jones. Basil, who had just heard the genealogy of the Dial of Destiny, took the dial from Voller's hand and escaped through the open carriage. It was in the carriage that they witnessed the shelling of the train, which was bombarded by a force of British warplanes. The attack also made the machine guns spin and shoot at the Nazis who tried to chase Jones. Jones and Basil climbed onto the train's roof to the front car. But on the way, they were stopped by Colonel Weber. When they passed through the tunnel, Jones and Weber started fighting. In the middle of the fight, Basil took Weber's gun and shot Weber dead. After Weber was killed, Voller appeared, pointing his gun at them, and asked Jones to return his dial. Jones unwillingly handed over the pieces of the dial bag to Voller, before finally, an iron hit Voller. At the same time, an allied aircraft deliberately blows up the bridge ahead, forcing Jones and Basil to jump into the river. After surviving, Jones reveals that he only gave Voller the pouch, and showed Basil the dial of destiny. The scene then switches to 1969, the day that many news reports were made about the return of the Apollo 11 astronauts from the moon. Many people were celebrating the news at the time, waking Jones from his sleep. It was also revealed that Jones and his wife Marion had separated. Jones then went to work as usual at Hunter College, where his students seemed uninterested in his discussions. However, one student, Helena Wombat Shaw, is interested in Jones's discussion. After finishing teaching, Jones went to the bar to calm his mind for a while. But not long afterward, Helena appeared while trying to engage Jones in conversation. Unbeknownst to Jones, Helena was Basil's daughter and Jones's godson, whom he hadn't seen in 18 years. The two began chatting about the Antikythera dial, where Jones told her the artifact was divided into two parts. It is known that the now-deceased Basil was on the verge of madness, trying to solve the secret about Antikythera. Helena then revealed that she had come to see Jones to ask him to help her find the other half in Tangier. Jones agrees, and takes Helena to the campus warehouse to show her the half of the dial he got on the Nazi train. Basil became obsessed by this German these Meanwhile, we are shown in a hotel with Voller, who apparently survived the tragedy on the train. Besides that, Voller is also working for NASA. Voller then ordered Klobber and Hauke to find Helena and Jones. Voller's goal is to find out more about the dial stolen by Jones, because Voller believes that the dial can help him into the past, where he will make history so that the Nazis win the war. In addition to his men, Voller hired an agent named Mason to follow Helena. Jones then takes Helena to the campus warehouse, where he keeps the pieces of his dial. 
While the two were discussing the dial, Mason, Clobber, and Hauka came to the campus and killed two lecturers who caught them. After that, they entered the warehouse and found Jones and Helena. Knowing their arrival, Helena immediately fled through the roof of the building while carrying half of the dial. While Jones escaped through a special room, as soon as he came out of the warehouse, Jones was shocked by his two dead colleagues. He immediately contacted the police, but simultaneously, Jones was caught by Voller's men. Jones was then carried into the truck by Mason and the others. On the way to Voller, they were forced to stop because the parade closed the road. This forced Mason and Kleber to carry Jones on foot. While crossing the parade, Jones took this opportunity to escape. He then asked for help from a policeman on horseback and immediately took his horse to escape. Of course, Clobber and Hauka didn't just let Jones escape, they took a motorcycle and car to chase Jones. In his pursuit, Clobber chased Jones to the subway station. There, Clobber lost track because Jones had entered the train track. After escaping the train collision, Jones immediately got into the train so that Mason and the others could not catch him. After the incident, Jones was framed for killing two officers on campus, and the news had spread so widely that a man next to Jones immediately shouted at Jones as a murderer. Fortunately, at that very moment, Jones's old Egyptian colleague Salah came to beat the man up. Salah now lives in New York and works as a taxi driver. Salah then took Jones to his house. Salah told him that Helena used to sell ancient artifacts at a hotel in Tangier, so Salah immediately took Jones to the airport so that Jones could go to Tangier. On the way, Jones remembers his past when he snatched the Dial of Destiny from Basil, who had gone mad learning about the pieces of the dial. Jones was forced to seize the dial and claimed to be handing it over to the museum, but Basil reminded Jones to destroy it if anyone wanted to find it at any time. No, Baz. In short, Jones finally arrived at a casino in Tangier owned by a mobster named Big Rahim. There, Jones found Helena, who was auctioning off half of the dial. How about 90? I'm her godfather, and she's a pest. But not long after, Voller and his men appeared and started a commotion. In the midst of the commotion, Helena asked her young friend Teddy to take away her dial, but unfortunately, Teddy failed to protect it, so Voller easily reclaimed it. After getting the dial, Voller left while Jones and Helena tried to chase him. But unfortunately, they failed because they were stopped by the police. However, shortly afterward, Big Rahim's son, Aziz Rahim, came to Helena to collect a debt. This happened because Helena deliberately sold the engagement ring given by Aziz. In the midst of the argument, Helena and Jones immediately ran away, which Teddy helped them do by using a bajai. Hey! The three fled using bajai, while Aziz's men chased them using motorcycles and cars. Their bajaj hit a wall on the run, so Helena and Teddy used another bajai. Jones does not remain silent, he immediately chases Helena, who is being chased by Aziz. During the chase, Jones managed to move into Helena's bajaj, where they found Voller. Helena then jumped into Voller's car and tried to grab the dial. When Helena was about to snatch her dial, Aziz suddenly crashed into Voller's car, allowing Voller to escape. While the three of them were again chased by Aziz, fortunately, the road they passed was too narrow, so Aziz's car was crushed. After escaping, their bajai broke down, forcing them to stop to repair the bajai. Meanwhile, Voller met Mason's troops and took him by helicopter. Inside the helicopter, Mason tells Voller that the U.S. government no longer approves of Voller's recent actions that have left two U.S. civilians dead. When Mason tells them that Voller and his men will be punished, they immediately revolt and take over the helicopter. They also kill Mason, who tries to fight them. While repairing Bajai, Jones convinces Helena that the Antikythera dial is valuable and shouldn't be sold because if it falls into the wrong hands, it could be potentially dangerous. Based on Basil's notes, they know that the tablet that will help them find the other half of the dial is somewhere in the Aegean Sea in Athens, Greece. Jones offers to help Helena get there, where Jones has a friend who is a good diver and has a very nice boat. The short story is that Jones, Helena, and Teddy go to Greece, precisely in Athens. There, they met a friend of Jones's who was good at diving, he was named Ronaldo. And that night, they left for the Aegean Sea. On the way, Helena tells Jones the location point of the Destiny Dial tablet, which was inside a Greek warship that was sunk thousands of years ago. Helena revealed that the dial in Voller's hand was initially found on the ship. 
From there, Helena argues that this dial is not ordinary, because if there is no extraordinary benefit, this dial must have been found very easily, and why should it be split into two parts? After saying this, Jones and Helena then began to talk. Jones revealed that he and Marion separated due to the death of their son, who chose to become a soldier in the Vietnam War. Jones was unable to comfort his grieving wife, and he stubbornly focused on his work at the university, until finally, he decided to leave Marion and file for divorce. In the morning, they arrived at the sinking point of the Greek ship. Jones, Helena and Ronaldo then began diving with the help of an oxygen hose. Arriving at the bottom of the sea, Helena and Jones entered half of the wreck, which became a nest for sea eels. There, Helena found a tablet still wrapped in a silver box, typical of ancient Greece. But when Helena picked up the box, a swarm of sea eels began to appear and attack Jones. Fortunately, Helena quickly rescued Jones from the eel's wrath. As they were about to return to the ship, they saw a boat approaching, and at that moment, the hose was cut off. Jones, Helena, and Ronaldo then surfaced to find that Voller and his men had taken over the ship and killed Ronaldo's men. Voller then opened the box and found that the tablet was written in the ancient Greek code cipher language. Unable to read it, Voller forced Jones to read the code. But Jones refused. Because of that, Voller killed Ronaldo with his gun. Seeing that, Helena made a deal with Voller that she would translate the code on the tablet for a high price. As a result, they agreed, and Helena began to solve the code, which basically meant that the existence of half of the dial was in a tomb in Alexandria. But without Voller knowing, Helena secretly lit a dynamite bomb and threw it at Voller. This also helps Helena, Jones, and Teddy escape while carrying the tablet. They escaped using Voller's boat. After getting far enough, Jones then blames Helena for telling Voller about the whereabouts of the other half of the dial. However, Helena apparently gave Voller the wrong information because the tomb was not in Alexandria but in Archimedes's tomb which has not yet been found. Jones then took the tablet and melted the wax covering it, and after that, a golden disc appeared that could lead them to the location of the tomb in Sicily. In Sicily. Long story short, when he arrives in Sicily, Jones begins to buy some gear to accompany his adventure. While Helena was helping Jones, Teddy separated from the two because he wanted to buy ice cream. But Teddy accidentally met Voller, Haka, and Klobber, who had been following them since earlier. The criminals kidnapped Teddy to attract Jones's attention. Helena and Jones, who saw the incident, immediately chased Voller by car. But on the way, Jones and Helena prefer to go to Archimedes's tomb first, to take half of the dial. Voller went to the tomb of Alexandria, which was not far from that place. Arriving at the location, the two went into a cave. After going deeper, they found a clue in the form of sunlight that formed a crescent moon. Right next to it is a gap that is thought to be the way to the tomb. The two then climbed the cave wall and entered the gap. After passing through the opening, they found a small bridge that looked very old. Jones and Helena then continued to explore the cave until they finally found the Temple of Athena, which had not been touched in 2,000 years. Here, Jonas manages to solve the riddle that activates the entrance to the tomb. Meanwhile, Voller, who had just been deceived, finally arrived at the location where Jones and Helena were. He gets info from Teddy that Jones went to Goa. Voller's group then found the cave and the opening. After they pass through the pass, Teddy tries to escape, but unfortunately, he fails and is handcuffed to Hawk's hand. Don't need to do that. As they crossed the bridge, Teddy snatched the handcuff key from Hawka's pocket and put it in his mouth. Due to Teddy's resistance, the bridge tilted and the two fell into the water. Teddy then took the key out of his mouth and broke free from the handcuffs. Teddy also deliberately handcuffed Hawka with iron to let him drown in the water. In short, Teddy managed to get out of the water and escape from Voller. Meanwhile, Jones and Helena finally arrived at Archimedes' tomb. The two then opened the tomb and found half of the dial in the hands of Archimedes' skeleton. Strangely, the image of a phoenix bird with a propeller was engraved on the tomb. Not only that, they also found a watch in Archimedes' hand. During Archimedes' lifetime, watches had not been invented, which still took thousands of years. This is where they concluded that Archimedes used the Antikythera dial to travel back to the future. It wasn't long before Voller appeared, pointing a gun at Helena. Jones and Helena handed over half of the dial to Voller in such a state. Voller then confessed that he wanted to use the dial to go to the past, where he planned to kill Hitler because he knew all the mistakes made by Hitler, so the Nazis would win the war. Voller then combined all the parts of the dial. 
Teddy, hiding on the statue, suddenly jumped towards Voller. Teddy and Helena took the opportunity to escape. But unfortunately, in the commotion, Jones was shot in the chest. As a result, Voller and his men took him. After seeing Voller take Jones, Helena followed him from behind on a motorcycle. On the way, Voller told Jones that he was going to August 20th, 1939, exactly 50 days before the Second World War. 1939. Soon, they arrived at the aeroplane hangar. There, Voller and his men wear Nazi uniforms. Voller then took Jones on the plane because the portal to the past was in the middle of a big cloud storm. Meanwhile, Helena and Teddy have just arrived and see that Voller is about to leave. Helena also asked Teddy to fly the plane because he had learned about the mechanics of the plane. Meanwhile, Helena was determined to catch the plane alone on a motorcycle. When the plane was about to take off, Helena jumped onto the wheel so she could get inside through the wheel. Meanwhile, Teddy managed to fly the plane, but the pilot was sleeping behind him without him realizing it. Voller then took his plane through the storm portal that was opened using the dial. But when about to enter the portal, Jones remembered that he had not taken into account the movement of the continents, so they might not enter the Second World War, but another year. Because it was too late, they finally entered the portal, including Teddy. After passing through the portal, Voller's plane suffered damage to the engine. At that moment, Voller saw the war from a distance on the coast of Sicily and thought it was the Second World War. However, as they approached, it turned out that it was not the Second World War, but the Roman-Syracuse War in 214 BC. That made Voller panic, but not Jones, a great admirer of history. Archimedes, who was still alive then, was immediately surprised to see two aeroplanes fly over in the middle of the war. This incident allowed Archimedes' tomb to be carved with a propeller-driven phoenix. He then returned to his desk, where it turned out that Archimedes was making his dial. Knowing that the dial was successful in bringing planes from the future, Archimedes immediately left to witness the two planes. Meanwhile, Voller's plane was attacked by Roman soldiers using spears. The Roman soldiers said that the object flying above them was a dragon. At that moment, Helena entered the cabin and dropped all of Voller's men. But one of Voller's men survived by pulling Helena's leg. Fortunately, Jones came and shot the man. But at the same time, Voller caught Jones. And when Voller was about to kill Jones, he was first shot by Helena. Helena then took a parachute and jumped with Jones. At the same time, the plane Voller was riding in was severely attacked until it finally crashed. As a result, Voller was killed in the incident. Archimedes then approached Voller's crashed plane and took the dial from Voller's corpse. He also took Voller's watch, which was exactly the same as the watch found by Jones and Helena on Archimedes's skeleton. Helena and Jones then landed safely. Here, Jones looks sad and tells Helena that he wants to stay in that place for the last time in his life because even if he returns to the future, he will have no one. But of course, Helena forbade it and insisted on returning Jones to the future. At that moment, one of the Roman soldiers was about to kill them, but fortunately, he was first killed by Archimedes and his students. Archimedes then thanked Jones for repelling the Roman soldiers who attacked the city of Sicily. Because the portal door was about to close, Helena asked Jones to board the plane immediately. But Jones once again refused. Because she was upset, Helena hit Jones unconscious and took him back to the future using the plane driven by Teddy. After a while, Jones wakes up from his stupor and is surprised when he is in his apartment. There, he then saw Helena, who told him the reason why Jones could not stay in the past. If that happened, it would have a major impact on future events and create a paradox. It wasn't long before Teddy arrived with Marion, which surprised Jones. Not only that, Salah also arrived with his grandchildren, so Helena invited them to go outside and give Jones and Marion time to talk. It doesn't hurt here. After talking to each other, Marion finally agrees to reconcile with Jones. And the movie is over. Don't forget to click subscribe, like and comment.